Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We ask that you speak to us. Lord, despite the situation, the weather, Lord, we are interested. We are willing. We are willing under the rain, under the sun, to hear from you. Therefore, take care of us and help us to hear and understand and be doers of your word and not hearers of your word alone in Jesus' name. Can I hear you say Amen? In Matthew chapter 13, verse 7. Matthew chapter 13. We thank God for the rain. If it is beating you, it is a blessing. In Matthew 13, verse 7. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and took them. And others fell into, into good ground and brought forth fruit from a hundred. Some sixty fold, some thirty fold. Who had ears to hear? Let him hear. In Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. Chapter 7 verse 21. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. In Philippians chapter 3 verse 17. Philippians chapter 3 verse 17. Look at your Bible. Philippians chapter 3 verse 17. Brethren, be followers together of me. And mark them which walk so as you have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping. That they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Whose end is destruction. Whose God is their belly. And whose glory is in their shame. Who mind earthly things. We are looking at the topic. The near but far from God. The near but far from God. Many people in the church are victims of this attitude. Those working in the office, those that are too close in the church, those that are serving very close. Even though such people are claiming to be true children of God. Because they are working in one office or the other in the church. Because they are doing one thing or the other in the church. Because they are too close to the pastor. Many of them are near, but I didn't hear you very well. They are near, but far. Such people are bound among pastors, leaders, workers, members especially. Those who are too familiar with the word of God and the pastor of the church. The more they get familiar, closer to the pastor, the general overseer, the more they become compromiser and hypocrites. You need to search your life. Are you among them? If you are among them, you are the near but far. And unfortunately, such people are bound in every church and shall not make heaven if they continue, if they fail to repent of that attitude and come out of hypocrit hypocritical Christian life. I want to let you know that no one of them can make it except he or she becomes serious believer in spirit and in truth and be truly converted. That is the only condition for that person to make it. And if you are among them, you are secretary, you are usher, you are pastor, you are administrator, you are this or that in the church, you are a monitor. And the more you monitor, the more you are administrator, the more you are scold in iniquity. Except you repent and amend your way, you cannot be saved. And if you remain in that condition, you say, I am too close to the pastor, I can see the general overseer, I work with him, I am too close, I work in the office, he knows me, and I know that I'm a believer, and you are not living right. You are among those that are near but far. That your work cannot save you, that your hypocritical life cannot save you. As you continue to do that, you miss the rapture. I pray that God will deliver you in Jesus' name. That takes me to the following subheadings. The reasons and warning, a response and the danger. 
Let's go to point number one. The reasons and warning. Many people, pastors, leaders, workers, and members are prone to this evil. Which the devil and the agents, agents have afflicted upon all believers. And those who claim to be nearer to the church. Those who claim to be nearer to the pastor. Those who work in the offices. Who work in the church. And those who are close to the general overseer. Or pastors of the branches. Many have made this mistake. And have become hypocritical. But the question is this. Whom are you deceiving? If you remain in that condition. And as a result of the little, little thing you are gaining. And you refuse to be converted. You are heading to hell fire. Did you hear what I'm saying? Now, if you look at Matthew chapter 15, verse 7. Matthew chapter 15. I read verse 7 again. You hypocrites. Where did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, These people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, and honour me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandment of men. Look at them. Many of them, the Bible knows, Jesus knows them, God knows them, he called them hypocrites. And he said, the draw near with their mouth, and honor the Lord with their lips, but their heart is far from God. Are you like that? Something must happen. Such people are called the near but far. The more they are familiar with the pastor and the word being preached, they will pretend to believe believers. But in their hearts and outside the church, they will live contrary to the word of God. Even in their families, they will live contrary to the word of God or to the will of God. Such pretenders will speak and act as children of God, as Christians in the church. And before the pastor and other way behave believers as true children of God. But in the absence of such people whom they are familiar with, they will act wickedly and they will do evil. They will be full of anger and they will be, you know, backbite and they will lie and they will steal and they will commit all sorts of evil. They will not encourage their children to live right. They will not even encourage their children to marry a choosing. They will not encourage their family members to be converted. And they are purporting to be choosing and believers. And yet, nobody in their family are getting born again. And yet, their children are marrying unbelievers. And they say they are this or that in the church. All such people, you are deceiving yourself. You are the near but far. Do you hear what I'm saying? There are many of them in the church. If you are there, you are hearing me. And you are among them. You must do something. Don't say the weather is making you to sleep. If you are sleeping then, it means that you are deep in death. You must wake up and then amend your way because there is no more time. Some of them pretenders. And those are looking for money. Sometimes they keep two wives. And then they come to deceive us that they marry only one wife. Whom are you deceiving? And some of them, they live a double standard life. They commit abortion. They commit adultery. And they come to the church and pretend to be believers. Whom are you deceiving? Some of them are into evil, evil dealings. And then they come to church and say, we are leaders, we are this. I want to let you know, you are among those that are near, but far. Amen their ways, and as you repent, I was showing you, the Lord will show you mercy. But if you continue in hypocrisy, 
and pretentious Christian life, at the end of this life, this message will bear me witness that the Lord knows you. You are in the church just for what to eat and what to drink. You are in the church just, you know, stealing. You are in the church and you are changing receipts and figures. You are in the church and then you are just, you know, if you are asked to go and buy something, no change. Go and buy this and go and buy that. There is nothing like accountability. And you think that God will isolate that. And then you put the money of church into your pocket. And then you will take the money that is meant for the running of the gospel. And use it for selfish interest. And you think that God is sleeping. I want to let you know. You are the near but far. All that double dealings. One day you will account for them. I don't know the wickedness you are into. A uh, pastor doesn't care. He gives you money and then you eat the change. Pastor doesn't care. He gives you money and then you manipulate the figures. A uh, pastor doesn't care and then he sends you for message. And then you double the money. One day, the owner of the money will care for it. And God is the owner. Are you hearing me? You are deceiving pastor because pastor is busy writing messages and praying and then preaching the word of God and doing the work of God and you are there stealing every day and you are there deceiving people and causing people around to pass life and you intimidate them and you go and tell pastor and what can he do and if you do that pastor will discipline you and then you keep on stealing with the name of the general overseer. One day, the Lord will find you out. Are you hearing me? And you keep on doing it with intimidating members of the church. We go and tell pastor. And nothing will happen. Or you begin to lay costs on them as a pastor. As a pastor, he said, hey, if you do this, this will happen to you. This will happen to you. And you never had that from me. Why are you intimidating people with cost things? The near but far. They are intimidating members with, fear, with causes. Threatening them with causes. Telling them if you do this, that this will happen. That will happen to you. This will happen to you. Who told you you are preaching the gospel? And you are scattering the flock. The near but far. Something must be done today. You must repent and make restitution. And recover those you are scattered. I don't know the evil you are into. Take load, and you are full of evil, committing all sorts of evil. God will not exonerate you, except you repent. Are you hearing me? I don't know the wickedness I into. If you look at Matthew chapter 15, verse 19. Matthew 15, reading verse 19. It says, Out, for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. Mothers, adulteries, fornication, thefts, false witness, blasphemy. Some of these people are full of all this kind of evil. But God knows you. Are you hearing me? In Luke chapter 16 verse 15, except you do something seriously and get your mind, your heart out of this evil, you cannot escape the judgment of God. In Luke chapter 16 verse 15, look at your Bible. Chapter 16 and verse 15. And I read. And he said unto them, You are they which justify yourself before men, but God knoweth your heart. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. You justify yourself, you make them to think you are a believer. But the Lord said he knows your heart. And uh, those people are, are there are just, you know, are trusting and depending on you, but they are empty. Something must be done today. Are you hearing me? If you look at Matthew 23, verse 25. Matthew 23, 23. And verse 25. Look at your Bible. I read from verse 25, Matthew 23. 
want to you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, perfectites of men and, and anis, and come in, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. This ought you to have done, and not to leave the other undone, you blind guys, which strain at, at Ganat, and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excesses. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you are like unto white sepulchre, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones, and full of uncleanness. Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Are you like that? Pastors, women leaders, House care leaders, administrators, are you like that? And monitors, are you like that? Evangelists, are you like that? Choristers, chorus leaders, are you like that? Inside, full of iniquity. Something must be done today. Otherwise, you reap what you have sold. Are you hearing me? The near but far. You claim to be committed, you claim to be in the church, but your heart is far from God. Something must be done to them. So everyone should examine his or herself and amen before it is too late. Are you hearing me? Do something quickly because the Lord is coming. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, don't you know? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, I read from Verse 9. Look at your Bible. And it says, chapter 6 from verse 9. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of the state with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Brethren, take note. The unrighteous shall not. And you must search your life. Is there anything that made you to be unrighteous? Are you living an unrighteous life? You must cry to God today and say, Lord, no more. No more. That's why I'm in this meeting. Save me. I will do restitution. I will mend my way. I will speak the truth. I will no longer hide and cover up. I will no longer continue in evil. And listen to me. If, if you think you deceive me and deceive the church, do you think you are going to deceive God? Do something now. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Look at our brother that returned back, returned back from, you know, from backsliding and from even opening a church. And is making a thorough restitution. I praise God for somebody like that. I praise God for those who have such boldness to amend their ways. And if you are there hiding yourself and saying, you know, feeling too big, and you are thinking of the kingdom of heaven, and full of self and full of pride, and you are living in iniquity, and you are holding the office of God, you must do something before it is too late. Pour an example from him. Look at the humility. Look at the repentance. Look at the confession. You must do something, do restitution, because there is no more time. That takes you to point number two. Our expected response and the danger. Everyone should understand that God is not a man. Are you hearing me? I say God is not a man. If you look at the book of Numbers 23 and verse 19, if you can open your Bible, please do so, if it is possible. Numbers chapter 23. I'm reading verse 19, and it says, and I read, God is not a man that he should lie, 
neither the son of man that he should repent. Had he said, and shall he not do it? Or had he spoken, and shall he not make it good? My brothers and sisters, God is not a man. You can't deceive him. Are you hearing me? No man can deceive him. He knows everyone inside and outside. You may deceive that brother. You are too close to him. And he's taking you as a Christian. But he doesn't know that you are a thief. You may deceive that sister. And he's taking you as a Christian. He doesn't know you are an evil person. A daughter and fornicator. And you may deceive that brother. And he doesn't know that you are a thief. And you are a wicked person. Even shed in blood by a butcher. My friend, God knows you. Are you hearing me? You may deceive that person by your side and he thought that you are genuine, but he doesn't know that you are a wicked person. He knows you, God knows you. If that brother doesn't know you, if that sister doesn't know you, God knows you. And that is the one that will judge you. And mend their ways before it is too late. Are you hearing me? I want to let you know, he knows the secret of our lives and he is the judge. Do you hear what I'm saying? God is the judge. If you look at the book of Hebrews chapter 4, His eyes is upon us. He knows everything. Hebrews chapter 4. I read verse 3. I mean verse 13 rather. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in sight. All things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Sister, my brother, everything that you are doing that open before him, all your secrets, all the thoughts of your heart, everything you have ever done, all of them are open before him. There is nothing about your life that is hidden except you repent. The Bible says we shall likewise perish. Do something before it is too late. God knows you. And if you are keeping secrets, He is a specialist in secrets. I'm talking about your father and my father. He is a specialized a specialist in secret. He knows every secret. In Deuteronomy chapter 29, look at verse 29. Everybody, if you can open your Bible, please let's open. Deuteronomy 29 verse 29 The secret thing belong unto the Lord our God But those things which are revealed Belong unto us And to our children forever That we may do all the works of this law But the point is this The secret thing belongs to who? And Sammy And you say you are hiding You are having secrets And then you are concealing secret things My friend you are deceiving yourself In Numbers chapter 32 and verse 23. If you are having secrets, if you are keeping secrets, if you are doing things in secret, and thinking that nobody knows about it, that is something I want you to understand. On that day, when you shall cross over, all your secrets shall be revealed. On that day, when you shall close your eyes, before the eyes of God, the judge, the righteous judge, your secret can never be secret anymore. Look at Numbers 32. I read verse 23. But if you will not do so, if you will not repent, if you will not amend your ways, if you refuse to do something with this message, one thing that is certain, behold, you have sinned against the Lord, and be sure that day your sin will find you out. Are you hearing me? Your sin, on that day, it will appear before God. And then you hear, depart from me. You that walk in iniquity and never know you. Where will you hide your face? Where will you repent? When will you make amendment again? Do something now before it is too late. Are you hearing me? If you look at the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 16, verse 8, the eyes of God is going up and down to show himself strong on behalf of them whose heart are perfect towards him. In Second Chronicles chapter 16 from verse 8. And he says, We are not the Topians and the Lubins, a huge host, with very many sharrows and horsemen. 
Yet because thou didst rely on the Lord, he delivered them into thy hand. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Hearing thou hast done foolishly, therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. My friend, listen to me. If you offend the Lord and turn away, you are here from hearing the truth. And if this repents, he said, I've seen you. From henceforth, he said, thou shalt have wars. I pray that you repent and be delivered from the judgment of God in Jesus' name. Remember, no matter who you are or we are, we know we are known before Him. No one can hide from Him. Anybody answer me. You can't hide from Him. In Psalm 139, verse 1, look at your Bible. Psalm 139, reading from verse 1. Turn your Bible, if you can do so, from verse 1. And I read Psalm 139. Verse 1, O Lord, Thou hast searched me and known me. He knows us. Thou knowest my down city and my uprising. He knows us. Thou understandest my thought afar off. He knows our thought. Thou compassed my heart and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. He knows all our ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, Lord, thou knowest it all together. Every word he has spoken, he knows them. Thou hast received me behind and before, and laid thy hands upon me. I want to let you know, God's hands is over you. If you have done evil, he will chastise you. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attend to it. Well, God's knowledge is much, much can incomparable with that of man. And if you think you are wise, and you are wise to do evil, you are deceiving yourself. But seven, whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? There is no way you can run from God. If I send up into heaven, that are there. God is there. And if I make my bed in hell, of course, if you go to the hell, <laughs> the Bible says, behold, that are there, God is there. If I tear the wings of morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there shall thy hands lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. I want to let you know, wherever you go, the hand of God will cast you. Are you hearing me? You cannot escape from his judgment. Therefore, do something before it is too late. So, we all should be sincere to God and ourselves. And ensure that our hearts are truly converted. We must run away from hypocrites. Are you hearing me? Hypocritical, hypocritical Christian life cannot help you. We must, we must all maintain purity right from the heart. For God is looking at your heart. The Bible said in the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. Blessed say that the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I want you to endeavor, pray. That God will purify, sanctify your heart. So that you will not appear before God with impurity. Remember, God is not just looking at man as man is seen. He looks at that heart. He knows your heart. Therefore, make sure that heart is right with God. Are you hearing me? We should endeavor to live a righteous life in secret and open. Knowing that it is acceptable by God Almighty. Are you hearing me? The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And verse 23, he said, I pray God that your soul, spirit, and body to preserve blameless. Spirit, soul, and body be preserved what? Blameless. Make sure that your spirit, your soul, your body, not only standing between you and God. Everyone must ensure genuine repentance from the heart before the trumpet sound. If you are a hypocrite and a pretender, or you are not sincere, God Almighty will find you out on the judgment day. Are you hearing me? Now let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12 from verse 13. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Look at your Bible. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God 
and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. My friends, if you have sinned, he said, Behold, you have sinned, and you have sinned, will it find the yoke out? Are you hearing me? In Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, Matthew chapter 7, I read verse 21. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. For he that do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devil, and in thy name done many wonderful words, and then will I profess unto them, I never know you. Depart from me, ye that walk iniquity. Let us pray. Such your life. Everybody, are you deceived? Because you say you are doing the work of God, you are performing miracles, and that is why you cannot listen to teaching again. Are you deceived? Because you claim to be a believer too close to the pastor, and, have, and you go on just following and win in the, in the nearer to the pastor without repentance. And you are just a criminal, a Judas, a thief, or a killer. Repent to and say, Lord, show me mercy. Everybody pray. Are you in the church? As usher? As a chorister? As a chorus leader? As a house care leader? As a pastor? As a worker? Are you there and you are seeing yourself as a protocol, as a security? And your life is evil? Call upon the Lord today and say, God, show me mercy. Are you administrator? Are you a secretary in the church? And you are living contrary to the will of God. You are no longer listening to the word of God. You are no longer searching your life. And there is no longer righteousness. Pray now. And say, God, save me before it is too late. I don't want to go to hell. Are you a pastor? And there you are collecting money, making pledges and from one time to the other. And giving, you know, you know, giving them money to pay. And you make a lot of money and put it in your pocket. Because nobody is there to supervise you. If you don't repent and do restriction, where will you go? Heaven, heaven is for the righteous. The unrighteous cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Everybody pray. There is no more time. Oh Lord, I look up unto heaven. Father, have mercy, O oh God. <clears throat> Father, have mercy, O oh God. <clears throat> Lord, for mercy rejoices over judgment. <clears throat> it is of your mercy you are not consumed, O oh God. <clears throat> your compassion faileth not. <clears throat> oh Lord, your Lord, remember mercy. Mercy, mercy, mercy. My father, I pray for mercy, I plead for mercy. For the choosing one soul over the world. On behalf of myself, my family, I plead for mercy. On behalf of the pastors and workers, I plead for mercy. On behalf of the members, I plead for mercy. Lord, you delight in mercy. Lord, you are merciful. Oh Lord, I precious mercy. We confess all hypocritical, unrighteous, unclean life, evil life, wicked life. I precious mercy. Lord, save and deliver your people. For my power, I pray, righteous Father, Lord, intervene, O oh God, save us, O oh Lord, Lord, save the church. I pray, I pray, Lord, sanctify our heart or put the root of sin. Save your people, Lord, the chosen one worldwide. Intervene in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord. Wherever you are such you are like, God is giving you another opportunity. This night is the hour of that opportunity. That mend their ways. That mend their ways. That mend their ways. Call upon the Lord. When will you repent? There is no repentance in the grave. There is no repentance after rapture. Now is the hour. Now is the acceptable time. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Do 
In Jesus name we pray. Precious Father. Without you. We can do nothing. Father because the heart of man is desperately wicked. And who can know it. All we are asking you this day. Convict us. Where we have erred. Lord, give us grace and mend our ways. And as we repent tonight, I pray your mercy and save everyone in Jesus' name. Daddy, save us, O oh Lord. Lord, I pray that I uproot every hypocritical Christian life from everyone in Jesus' name. I pray for the grace to live a life of purity, a life of holiness. Lord, ask for grace that men that well and do restitution. Let that grace be showered upon everyone in Jesus' name. Can I hear you say, Amen?